Hi quilting friends, it's me Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber and I'm so, so excited for today's video. I just, I can't wait. This is a product that I made in the past and I've been looking forward to making another one and I want to make it with you so that you know how to make your own quilted hoodie. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use an existing hoodie to make our quilted hoodie and I have step by step of making this before on my blog. I did it several years ago with Pat Bravo's Rapture fabric and today I'm going to use Katarina Rotella's Aquarelle fabrics. I have these that I pulled and set aside from another project and I'm going to use those for taking this navy hoodie and really just giving it a pop of color and some little extra style. Quilted jackets are super popular right now, but I live in San Diego. And so I don't really have a lot of use for a quilted jacket, no matter how gorgeous it is. But a good hoodie, I can use that all the time. And so we're gonna go ahead and make a quilted hoodie and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do step-by-step step here in this video. Okay, let's talk about the supplies that we're going to need. I have a blog post that goes through all of how it is made in detail with the original hoodie that I made using Rapture fabrics. And yes, that is a piece of washi tape over my camera. Please feel free to chuckle at that. I think it's hysterical as well. So this is the original hoodie that I made using this method um, from Rapture fabrics. So we're going to use that exact same method. What you'll want is you'll want some fusible fleece. I buy tons of it because I use it for so many projects. It's got like a bumpy fusible on one side and it's kind of like a very thin batting and it's great for any quilted projects that aren't quilts. I use it for lots of bags and things like that. You'll want your hoodie and this one I have a really lightweight hoodie so it's going to be great for all seasons here in San Diego. It has like your standard hoodie front pockets. We're going to be carefully removing those in a little bit. It's 100% cotton and it doesn't have a lot of stretch. It has a little bit, but it's not too, too stretchy. Um, that stretch is going to get taken out. And so really you want to have a hoodie that is comfortable without being stretched at all because when we add this woven cotton fabric and fusible fleece on top, it's going to take the stretch out and no longer be stretchy. So you wanna make sure that this fits comfortably without it being snug on your body. Then you want your fabrics. I have these fabrics and I also have this big print. Um, this is gonna be, this is what I call my hero fabric. And this is what I'm gonna use inside the hood of the fabric. So, or the hood of the hoodie. <laughs> so this is gonna be my hood fabric. This is gonna be my more um, decorative fabric on the front. And then I'm gonna need to decide what I want for my pocket. If I have enough left over of this hero fabric, I might use some of this for my pockets. Um, or I might do something with these fabrics. I really have options, so I'll let myself get to those options when I need to choose. I won't force myself into choosing now. Okay, so I have my fabrics. I have freezer paper, and freezer paper is awesome for all kinds of projects. It is a little trickier to find sometimes. When I run out of freezer paper, I always go and buy several rolls. Um, usually like a big box store is more likely to have it than a grocery store I've found. And freezer paper is shiny on one side. You can see that shine it has like a plastic on this side and then it's paper on the other side. And so you can actually use it to iron right on to fabrics. Um, which is going to be great because we need to make ourselves some templates and this freezer paper is going to work perfect for that. You're also going to need a seam ripper, um, a marking pen, an iron, your sewing machine, thread, really just basic typical supplies at this point. So let's go ahead and we're going to get started and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to carefully rip off the front pockets and these pockets are then sewn in by the zipper. So I'm gonna get as close as I can and then I'm gonna cut away the pocket as close as I can without doing any damage to what's left of my hoodie. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these pockets 
and then we'll head on to our next step. So there's one pocket removed. I am going to keep this pocket as the beginnings of a template for when I make the new pockets. And the new pockets I'm gonna to wanna to make larger because I like bigger pockets. This is just a tiny little, these are the pockets that you put on girls' pants. I don't want girls' pant size pockets on my woman's sweater. This is a sweater that's gonna get a lot of use. I'm gonna want it a little taller and I'm gonna definitely want it wider to really be able to use this pocket. You can see I cut cleanly right up to the edges and I'm not worried about fray because this is a knit so I won't have any nonsense fray and this should be more or less covered up when I finish up um, when I put on the new pockets or if this is the side that I use for decorative that, that I put the decorative on. So let me go ahead and grab my other pocket and I'm going to rip that. This little seam ripper is called Cindy's Ripper. It's the best little unpicker and it is super fun. I have another video on that so you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested in learning more or you can go check out the description box. I have a link to where you can get this little seam ripper or where you can learn more. Okay, so I have both of my pockets cut off and I'm going to heat up my iron for the freezer paper while I work with my pockets. Okay, I have my iron heating up and I have my pocket. Now I want to make my pocket larger than the original pocket. Um, I like bigger pockets. And that's the great thing about this is that I can customize it however I want. So I'm gonna grab a square ruler to start my measurements off with. And you can see that this isn't exactly square, but it's gonna be pretty close to square on the finished. So I'm going to start myself off with a nice right angle. There we go. Now I want my pocket to extend out further than this one. And I do like the angle that this pocket is at. So I'm just going to decide how far I want it out. And this isn't scientific at all. In this case, I'm going well, two and a half inches out further. Depending on how large you are and how large you want your pocket, you'll make this how you like it. And then I'm going to make the top, oh, I want it a good, it's about an inch and a half larger. It's not so much about the measurement. Okay. And then I have this curve to deal with. And I don't want a straight angle, although you could totally t make a line and then have a straight angle. I feel like that'd be weird. I feel like curves on these pockets are kind of the norm and I don't want it to look way crazy. So I'm going to kind of eyeball how I'm gonna have my curve and I'm just kind of lightly pencil sketching. All right, does that feel crazy big for a pocket? That, you know what, that feels really crazy big for a pocket to me. I don't know. I feel like that's gonna be like my whole stomach. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down a notch. And the great thing about this is you can make your pockets and attaching them is the very last thing. So you're not committed to your pockets until after the very last minute. So attaching the pockets is the very last thing. You can pin them on, put on your sweater, look at how it looks, um, decide if you're happy with this or not, and remake your pockets completely if you hate them. So totally 
so many options. Okay, I like this new version. I'm happy with this new version. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And that's going to be my cutting for my fabric. Apparently this is gonna be the video where I show you all the cool tools. <laughs> I have been looking for an excuse to use these and I didn't know if it would come up in one minute or one year. I got these ooh, about a month ago from Mallory and this is sewhere.com but she is the inventor of these little seam allowance discs. And so all I have to do is pop the chain Pop off the quarter inch seam allowance disc. I'm going to put my pencil in that quarter inch seam allowance disc. And then I'm going to give myself a quarter inch seam allowance right along the curve that I drew. Now you could take your ruler and measure and mark a line, measure and mark a line. But man, that was so fast and I had it right here. So I'll link to these down below as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one away, but that is a fun little tool and the perfect use for adding a seam allowance to my little pattern. And these discs come in 5 8 half inch, 3 8 and quarter inch seam allowances. Garment sewers may be asking why I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance because this is a garment and with a garment sewing you use a bigger, like a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And the answer is because of a quilter and quilters, we believe that the only seam allowance ever on the planet that you ever need is a quarter inch. So I went ahead and did a quarter inch. But if you would like your seam allowance a different size, absolutely make your seam allowance whatever size makes sense to you because you are making your sweater and this is your template, I won't even ever see it. And even if I did, I promise I would not judge. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this template while I've got it here. And then we're gonna move on to our next step, which is making our hood template. Okay, now we're gonna see why I went with freezer paper to make all of our templates. And that's because freezer paper we can iron on to whatever we want. So I'm gonna take my hood and I'm turning it right side out. Or excuse me, right side in. So it's right sides together. And this is my hood. And I'm gonna do my best to smooth it out. You might have a three part hood where it's one side and then the back and then another side. If so, you'll have to decide, do I wanna go ahead and just fold it in half or do I wanna do something more complex? Now you'll see that this one has a fold across the top. So it's actually one piece of fabric. I'm going to, when I make my inside, keep it as two different pieces of fabric just because that's gonna be easier for me. I've cut my piece of freezer paper a little bit bigger than the hood. I'm just using a hot iron and I'm just ironing it on. The first thing to note here is that there is a hem here on the side where it's just folded over. And when I stitch my fabric in place here, I'm gonna want it inside that hem. So I'm just gonna fold this over, give it a good crease, and then I can gently peel this back and I can cut on that crease because that's going to be the front edge of my hood. Then I can flip it over and I can see the hood here really well. And I'm just gonna cut along the edge. I'm not giving myself a seam allowance on this one. Now you could draw this and then draw on your seam allowance. I'm just going to add my seam allowance when I make my hood. Okay. This bottom here is a little 
wiggly and that's just because of the stretch of the fabric. I'm going to do my best, get a nice close mark there. I can peel this off. So I have my fabric that I'm going to use for my hood. I'm going to put it right sides together. And then the question becomes, how do I want these stripes? Because it's directional. Do I want to place my hood like this so that the stripes are coming kind of out of the hood? Or do I want to place my hood like this so the stripes are kind of going around the hood? And I like this around the hood orientation better, but there is no wrong here. So you go with what makes you happy. And if you have any good prints here, double check that you have those prints showing, and I do. My prints will absolutely be on the hood. And they're actually near the front of the hood, so when I have the hood up, you'll actually see them kind of kissing my cheeks. And I'm ironing this on, giving myself more than a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I can rough cut around here, giving myself at least a half inch. Now I'm leaving this template for my hood right on there. And if you want, you can pin through your layers because this template is ironed to the wrong side of my fabric, which has another fabric right sides together with it. So you can pin these layers together if you want. I'm not a huge pinner, but totally up to you. I'm gonna grab my sewing machine and turn her on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just sew right next to that paper, right next to that paper guide and I'm gonna start at the bottom of my hood and go all the way to the front of my hood. Okay, we've stitched all the way around. You can go ahead, actually, no, we're gonna leave that on. We don't wanna remove that yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna trim down my seam allowance. We're just trimming it down because we just don't need that much bulk. And then on our curved areas, we're gonna clip. And we're not clipping the thread. We're clipping just the seam allowance. You don't wanna go, you wanna be at least two or three threads away from the edge. And this is just gonna make that curve relax in the hood a lot easier. We're gonna go back to our iron. And we're going to press just one layer of fabric over our paper template. And this is going to create our finished edge. Once you've pressed that, you can take off the paper template because now we know where our hood is going to be. And on the other fabric, you're just gonna match up front and back. I've opened up my back seam so that I can press. I'm gonna go in and press open this back seam. And that just means that the bulk is on both sides. And I don't have to worry about anything big and lumpy. Um, you can press it to one side if that makes you happier. Totally fine. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just press the snipped bits to one side because they're a little fussy to try to make sure all of those are pressed open. I am gonna make sure that this part at the front is pressed open because this is folded over and so we have lots of layers. There we go, we have our hood. This will be the inside you can see on one side. This will be the inside you can see on the other side. I love it. Let's go ahead and attach it already. We haven't finished our pattern because we haven't made our front yet, but we can go ahead and just attach the hood already. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the hood because we can and because it'll feel like we've made some progress. And even if you don't take off your pockets and just add some fun fabric to the hood, of your hoodies. 
um, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, I've got my center seam and I'm lining up my center seam of my hood to the center seam here. And I'm just gonna give it a pin so that those are lined up. And I'm gonna come over here to my edge and I have this piece sticking out. I'm just gonna tuck it in. And this is getting right up against the existing casing that's here for the string. Because I want that string to still be usable. And now I've got a not very flexible woven and a pretty flexible knit. And I want to lay them as smooth as possible and add a couple pins. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I've got my middle pinned, I'm gonna pin my edge and then I'm going to, as smooth as possible, go across. Okay, I have my whole bottom pinned. I'm loving this fabric with this hoodie. I cannot wait to wear this. Also, total perk is that this is art gallery fabrics and art gallery fabrics feel amazing. And so having art gallery fabrics against my cheeks on this hoodie is just, oh, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. Okay, so I don't have a center seam on the top, but I do know where it was. I had it creased and pressed from the iron, so I know where that center seam would be if it existed. So I'll be able to line up my center seam on my woven with the non-center seam on my knit. I can find it again. Okay. I will not be lazy. I will find that center seam or non-seam as it is and give it a pin. And that way I know exactly where I'm lining everything up. Okay. Because what's the point of lining things up if you're lining them up with nothing? All right. So I've got my top pinned and my bottom pinned and I'm going to carefully not poke myself, fingers crossed. And I'm going to lay this as smooth and flat as I can. Again, it's a woven and a knit and one is stretchy and one is not. So it won't be as forgiving. Just forgive yourself. It will be fine. This is a hoodie. It is the most casual of garments, and we're going to have a little bit of casual sewing here. Okay, so I've got this edge pinned. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other edge. We have our hood pinned inside our hoodie. Oh, doesn't it give us so much? Yes, I don't have to ask. We already know. It gives it so much more style, so much more fun. I mean, love, ah. Oh. I can't even tell you how happy this is making me. I'm sure you can tell. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch this in place all the way around. And I'm gonna go around twice, just because I've got a knit fabric and a non-knit fabric, and I want them to really just come together. You have options, they're up to you. You could do a zigzag. I think the zigzag's gonna show because I'm using a dark thread and I'll be able to see it, and that's gonna make me unhappy. So I'm just going to, um, use a straight stitch and go around two times and the second time I'll go around about an eighth of an inch away from the first. So I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch from the edge of my woven fabric all the way around and then in another eighth all the way around and lock my stitches forward and back at the beginning and end. As you sew, don't worry, like don't worry about being super exact. No one is ever going to look as close at this hood as you are right now, um, it's not a big deal. If you pick a thread that matches the the garment, the hoodie itself really well, um, you're gonna be fine.
Okay, we can already feel some accomplishment. We have the hood sewn in. It looks awesome. If you want, you can stitch a seam down this middle to secure the two layers. Uh, I'm not worried about that. It's gonna be fine. And if you look really closely, you can see my stitching lines, but you'd have to know that they were there to look for them. Um, looks really cool, super psyched. Okay, our next step is to make the front. So we're gonna do the same process that we did with the hood, which is why we did the hood first to kind of learn how that process worked and what it's gonna look like. And we're gonna make ourselves a template of one side of the sweater. So we're gonna grab our freezer paper again and we're gonna iron it in place. Just like before with the hoodie, we can go ahead and start by cutting the parts that are obvious, which are this bottom edge and the edge along the zipper. Now, we're going to carefully cut around the other parts. Now, if you cut away too much at one point, all you need to do is take a piece of freezer paper and then just tape it over the spot where you cut too much and then recut, because this is just a template. Once you have your whole template created, now it's decision time. How do I want the front to look? Remember that I will have a pocket covering this part, so I don't want to have too much decorative down here because it's going to get covered up by a pocket anyway. Um, do I want to do plain stripes? Do I want to do angles? Do I want like a wishbone? Ooh, I'm loving the wishbone thought. And I need to create a panel of fabric that is larger than this by at least an inch on all sides. I got the sewing of my front of my hoodie done and I'm so psyched with how this looks. You can see a little bit here, I did this herringbone piecing and I've already trimmed this off a bit. I trimmed this end off here and this end off here just so it'll fit my space. But these I can totally use later. I can stitch them together if I want. Um, these might even be my pocket. We'll decide that when we get to that point. And I'm basically going to do the same process that I did before with the hood of my hoodie. I ironed my template onto my fabric and I'm t ironed it onto the, the right side of my fabric because if we remember this template is of the, this is the right side of my hoodie. It's gonna be a lot of right sides, apologize. So this is the right side of my body and it was facing up. And so this is the front top. And because I want the color of the fabric to be showing, I need the front of the fabric to be up. I hope that makes sense. In any case, this is the way you need to do it. And the why only matters if you really wanna know the why. What I did is I went ahead and folded about an equal distance from the edge here away from this edge. So I've got this, oh, that's probably about two, two and a half inches strip right here. And I folded that over. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to line that up with the points on my piecing. So if there is a part of your pieced work that you want lined up a certain way. So like let's say that you had little cornerstones going all the way down the front. You want to create a line that you can line those up with before you iron this onto your fabric. And that way I'm going to have all of this lined up instead of kind of at some weird angle. Um, I mean a weird angle could be cool like doing it from the shoulder kind of across could look really cool. I, am, I chose to have it go straight that's what I went with. Um, I chose to have the lines go this direction because I'm gonna hope that it's slimming. <laughs> I have no idea if it actually is. I'm not a garment expert, um, but we're gonna pretend that it's going to be slimming and uh, I'm gonna love that about this. So, but it's still gonna add interest. I think it's gonna be fun. So now I'm going to go ahead and just trim this up a little more. I'm gonna give myself somewhere between a half inch and an inch or so. This isn't rocket science here. 
And in some areas, I only have like a quarter inch, totally fine. As long as I have at least a quarter inch, I'm fine. And this may be some of the worst cutting that I've ever done in my entire life. So feel free to judge me because I'm judging me. So now I have the front panel of my hoodie put together and I want to attach it to the front of my hoodie the exact same way that we did with oh, this gorgeous hood. Still in love with that. All right, I'm excited about the way this is going. So the easiest way to do this is to start with the straight lines. And again, this is a woven, a woven fabric and a knit fabric that are coming together and they are not going to love coming together. Um, so we just get to play a little bit. I'm gonna start by creating myself a corner here at this corner. And the, the part that's going to matter the most is the part that people are actually going to see. And they're going to see this front seam a whole lot more than they're ever going to see your side seam. So if there's one seam that we wanna have really pretty, it's gonna be this front seam. So I can fold this by hand and pin it on, but because this is straight, I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my iron and I'm going to press this under to be able to have a nice clean line that I'm gonna pin onto my front. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I went ahead and folded under all of my straight lines and I left my neck and my arm holes here. Um, I'm going to have to do those by hand anyway, and I'm totally fine doing those by hand. Not a big deal. They're also going to need some clips. So I'm going to go ahead and add those little clips now. I'm not going all the way through. I'm leaving myself a good eighth of an inch um, just to make sure that I'm not going too close. I can always cut more, but I can't cut less. But this will just help with turning this under, especially since I have such a large seam allowance that I gave myself here. Back to my hoodie. I'm gonna lay this out. I'm gonna start in this bottom corner and along the bottom. I'm gonna peel away my paper and I'm not gonna pin the paper because once this is all pinned, the paper is not going to matter. I'm not going to sew through the paper. I'm going to want the paper gone. So really, the paper was my template. It's not part of the finished project. And if the paper is getting in your way at this point, you could probably just peel back the whole thing. It wouldn't even matter. Also, remember that these um, ironing lines that you ironed on here, they're just guidelines. So if laying this smooth means pulling this up a little further, going past your um, crease or letting out a little further from your crease, um, do it. It's the, the crease was just to help you out. It isn't set in stone at all. How cool does that fuchsia look against the navy? So good, so good. Okay, I've got this laid out and you could use a little bit of basting spray to kind of secure these layers if you wanted. Um, I didn't do that. I'm not mad at it, it's fine. Um, I've got a nice smooth table to lay this out on, so totally fine. And I'm going to, I did the bottom, I did the front, and I'm gonna work my way up this side to get up to the top. Okay, so I have this all pinned, I've worked my way up, and now my choices are my armhole or my neck hole. Now, the armhole, when I wear this sweater, is going to 
it's gonna have my arm in it and my sleeve is going to be covering part of that. So if I have to choose what is going to be more smooth and perfect of the two curves, um, and hopefully I can get them both smooth and perfect, but the one that people are going to see more is going to be this neck curve up here. So I'm going to choose to do that next. I'm gonna lay this as smooth as I can, but when you're working with a curve in a garment like this, Smooth isn't always going to be perfect, but that's totally fine. All right, I've gotten up to this shoulder seam and my crease is, looks like, is it off? No, nope, actually it's pretty spot on. So that's lovely. You can just fold right into this. And I don't use a lot of pins generally, but in a project like this, pins are your friend, except when, you know, they poke you. So be careful about the pokes and use lots of pins. All right, I've worked my way up and around and all I have left is this shoulder seam, which basically I've been avoiding because it's not my favorite. But remember, like look at your shoulder seams on your clothes right now. Is anybody seeing it? No, they're not. Um, so only the person who folds your laundry is ever going to see this and likely that's just you. So just do your best and guaranteed that your best will be just fine. This very last bit here is in the armpit. So it is literally going to be the least seen part of your garment. If you need to do any kind of little tuck, that's the spot to do it. This ended up pretty darn good. So now I can take this to my sewing machine. I'm going to do this the exact same way that I did with the hood where I'm going to go right up against the edge and I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm only gonna go around once because I don't want a second line of stitching to show up on this, but what I am going to do is I'm going to do some top stitching, quilting stitches um, right along some of these lines here. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do some extra lines of stitching in these spots. This is going to help secure the two layers together. It's going to add a little bit of pop. If I remember to increase my stitch length, which sometimes I intend to do and forget to do, um, but if I remember to increase my stitch length, I'll increase the stitch length to make those stitches a little more pronounced, um, and I think that'll be fun. And I'm going to go slow because this bottom layer is in it, so it is going to want to stretch, but I'm not going to stress too much about that. And if you have any like non-perfect smooth smoothness, Ah, say that again. If you have any non-perfect smoothness in your garment between these two layers, you wanna start any top stitching here at the zipper and go in because then any puckers are going to end up on this side. If you start here and you start stitching in, and you see I'm making a bubble and I'm doing that on purpose, by the time I get over here, that bubble is going to show up in the front and that's not where I want it. So again, we're embracing the imperfection in our really casual garment and we're knowing that those imperfections are gonna go to the outside and not towards the inside and then it'll be lovely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that stitching. Okay, so I sewed all the way around. I made sure to go backwards and forwards at the front and back, or at the beginning and end of my thread to make sure that I locked those stitches and kept this all secure. Y'all, like, this is looking so good. <laughs> this is gonna be mine. I'm gonna get to wear this. Okay. Um, if you didn't before, now is a really great time to double check, and even if you did before, to make sure that the pinning and stitching happened only through the layers that you wanted the pinning and stitching to happen through. That you didn't have any puckers or um, 
extra fabric or a sleeve that you accidentally sewed into the project um, because that can happen. There's a lot of like things going on here. If that happened, no big deal. Just grab your seam ripper or carefully unpick those stitches um, and then restitch that part, making sure like, let's say that this part right here now has a hole in it because I had to rip that out. Start here, go back and forth, restitch that part at the end, go back and forth. No one's ever gonna look at your stitches that closely to know, okay, that's exactly where she screwed up. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add my top stitching. I am going to remember to increase my stitch length. I went from a two and a half to a four. Um, I just think that's gonna look a little better. And I have this pretty smooth, so I'm not gonna worry too much about going from one end always in. Uh, and I wanna just keep the stitch party going. So I'm gonna start at one spot, make my stitch, and then I'm going to backtrack, go over where my stitches were before, and then do the next part, and then backtrack over my stitches, and I'm gonna do that all the way uh, down this garment. So I just ended up going up and down and I put a line of stitching on either side of every seam. You don't have to be that intense about it at all. Um, just a little bit of stitching to keep the layers together so you don't have ballooning after it's washed is really all you need. But um, I'm a quilter and uh, so I quilted it. Yes, I did. And so now we've got our hood done and our front done and we are going to do our pockets. Grab that template that we made earlier on and check what side the template is for. So in this case, obviously it's a template for this side and I'll just reverse it for the other side. No big deal. That's gonna be easy enough to do. Now I need to decide what kinds of pockets I want in each spot. I have still some of I have still some of my hero fabric and I also have scraps that are left over from this piecing that I kind of put together. So I want this scrappy piece to be the pocket on the opposite side so that I have piecing on both sides, but I want the pocket on this side to be floral from my hero piece. And there are some really good floral bits still left in here. So hopefully I can get a big enough piece for my pocket. So let's get that going. This is made of that same freezer paper, so it's going to be perfect to just iron right onto my fabric if I can find a good spot to grab. Ooh, this might be a good one right here. Okay, my seam allowance is already on there, so I don't need to worry about extra space. And now the question becomes, do I want the floral on the top? Do I want the floral? I think I want the floral down in the bottom corner. And it's gonna grab this little bitty flower out here and I think that's gonna look cute. And if you used not freezer paper, you could just pin and then cut. And that would be pretty normal. Because I used freezer paper, I don't need to pin it. I can just iron it and cut. I have left over this fabric. I could use it for another project or I could use it for the lining of my pockets because my pocket needs an outside bit, which is what I have right here. I can peel that off. So that's going to be my outside pocket. Oh, how like perfect floral right there on the pocket, love. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the lining pieces and I'm gonna cut the lining for both at the same time. The two layers are wrong sides together. And so that means that I'll have one facing one way and one facing the other way. And I'll have a lining for both sides. I just need to make sure that the two layers don't shift. So I'm just gonna add a couple pins just to be sure that it doesn't shift because if it does, it would be a bummer that could have been saved by just a couple pins. Those are my two lining pieces. I'm gonna set those aside. And now I'm going to make my pocket for the other side. 
and I'm gonna do that with this fabric right here. Now I have this pretty pieced bit and I'm going to fuse this to the back. And the way I know I need to fuse it to the back is because on this pocket, I fused to the front. So on this pocket, I need to fuse to the back. So I have one facing each way. And I have this fun like arrow kind of shape going and I want to have that do something in the pocket. double check I have a pocket for this side I have a pocket facing the opposite direction so I do have both my pockets this is gonna be the pocket on my piece panel this is gonna be my pocket on my solid panel if you wanted to do piece panels on both sides if you wanted to do piece panels on both sides and the back if you wanted to try to piece your sleeves you could do all those things I just like having one piece panel I think that's plenty for me so um, now I'm gonna take these and put them on to some fusible fleece we talked about this a little bit at the beginning. Um, I don't want my pockets to be just two layers of quilting cotton. That's going to be too thin. I do like putting my hands in my pockets to keep them warm and also having this fusible fleece in the pocket is going to make it so that if you have keys or something in your pocket, you don't see the outline of every single key. It just gives it a little bit smoother look. Plus it allows us to quilt these pockets a little bit. If you are worried about getting gunk on your iron, then you can use a Teflon sheet or other pressing sheet or pressing cloth. We have our two pockets. We have our two lining pieces and we're going to place these lining pieces right sides together with each pocket. You can add a couple pins here to pin the layers together. I'm not a big pinner, which you know if you've seen this channel, I know this video has had zero proof that I don't love pins seeing as how I've pinned so much, but I'm going to skip the pins on this one. You are welcome to pin. What we're going to do is we're going to stitch starting at the bottom all the way around, leaving a good hole here for turning. So starting here, going around, ending here, and that's going to leave us this hole for turning. I'm going to do the same on the other side, and then we'll clip our corners and turn them. Okay, clipping our corners means removing the bulk from these corners because when we flip it right side out, all of this is gonna have to get shoved in that little corner and we're not gonna have a nice sharp point anymore. So I don't like to clip my corners just blunt. I like to clip kind of in and in and that makes kind of a gradual and it leaves these seagull shapes that I'm cutting off my corners. You are welcome to cut clip your corners whatever way it makes you most comfortable. and then you'll want to clip in your curve. You can, if you want, go ahead and clip notches out of your curve. Um, this fusible fleece is pretty compressible with an iron, so I'm not worried about the bulk in the curve, uh, but I do want to have a nice smooth curve. So the clipping is more about giving the fabric room to groove rather than taking away bulk fabric. Repeat with the other pocket. Now we are ready to turn these right side out. Now it can be really tempting to use the points of your scissors to get into those little areas. You want to use something plastic though. This is a mini rotary cutter and it has specifically a little point turning tool. As long as I keep the lid on here so I don't cut my hand, then I can use this point turner, but there's all kinds of point turning tools. A purple thing would work great. Um, just not, uh, a chopstick would work great. Not something sharp that's going to cut or rip through your fabric.
We're gonna press these flat and we're going to take that opening and tuck it in when we press. Those are pockets. Now I want to stitch the layers together and I wanna do a couple things when I stitch these layers together. So on this one, I wanna add quilting to match the quilting that I have on my panel of my hoodie on the other side. So I'm gonna do that quilting on here. And I want to, on both pockets, stitch this curve closed. On this one, I'm going to, I think, quilt just around the design. Just kind of do a stitching around to kind of accent this, and that'll just keep those layers together. I don't need to stitch around these four sides, the four straight sides, because those are going to get stitched down when I stitch the pockets in place. So I'm not worried about closing this hole. I'm just going to stitch this curve because that's not gonna get stitched down when the pockets get stitched in place because I want that open. And I'm going to do some quilting to keep those layers together and also add a little decorative. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I have my finished pockets. I'm gonna clip some stray threads so they don't get in the way later. They're just tacked together, quilted. I did a little more quilting on this one, a little less on that one. You could do just a couple straight lines, you could do a star, you could, you might be able to get away with just this line. I just didn't want to have any extra ballooning. Now these feel really stiff, which might have you concerned. The moment that this gets washed, they're going to be soft. They're gonna be just fine. So if you're feeling like, oh, these are really stiff, it's gonna be like this ugly stiff, no, it's not, you're fine. Promise, I've done this before, we're okay. All right, so I know we were at our no pinning But we're gonna have to bring out the pins to attach these pockets to the hoodie. And once these pockets are attached, like we're done, that's it. Last step here. So this pocket is going on this side. I'm gonna line everything up. I wanna make sure that this bottom gets closed. I could go ahead and stitch that one already. I'm going to just take my other side and pin on my other side so that I have just everything pinned. The danger of pinning on both sides is that you have all these extra pins that you might stab yourself with. But the plus side of pinning both sides is that they're both done. So up to you. There's no right or wrong here. And I'm just pulling the, the hoodie fabric to line it up with the pocket. All right, ready for sewing. We've done this part before. We're gonna start, go back and forth to lock our stitches. We wanna be extra secure, especially on this bottom part of the pocket because that's where when your hands are in, they're gonna pull. We're going to go all the way around with a line of stitching, go back and forth. And then because these are pockets and we want them to be super secure, I am going to do a second round of stitching on these ones. Come back to the beginning, back and forth, really lock my stitches and have a completed finished pocket stitch the other one as well, and uh, yeah, then uh, I get to wear it, and I'm so excited. Let's get this last bit done. I've got my pockets on. Those are nice. Oh, those are nice and roomy. I love good big pockets. I have my beautiful quilted pieced panel, my Patrick panel. I have my snugly beautiful hood. I think this is just ready to go. Now there is one more thing that you can add if you like. I like to save my selvages 
from Cutting My Fabrics and this was uh, the Aquarelle fabric from Caterina Rocella and so I have this beautiful piece right here. Yes, that's the piece that I want. And I'm going to just cut out this piece right here, press in my edges, and then I'm going to add this in the tag right here. Now you can choose to keep this logo. I'm going to see if this, how much it covers up. And then I'm going to add my little tag here. I had these made forever ago and I always forget to include them in things. So we'll cover that up like that. And it's just one of those little secret touches. No one else is ever going to see this. It's on the inside of the hoodie, but I just think it's like a little extra fun touch. So I'm going to stitch that on and have my hoodie all done. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope that you make your own quilted hoodie. These are so much fun. They're so much fun to wear. You get so many comments on it. If you're out and about wearing your quilted hoodie, people ask so many fun questions. And it really, there are a couple different steps in making it, but it's not a complicated process. And really, even a beginner can make it. You don't have to use a pieced panel. You can use a solid piece of fabric. There's so many different ways that you can make this your own. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so excited about this hoodie. I hope you make one and that you share with me photos of you in your quilted hoodie because they're just the best. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. The comment section is for you and I do look for those comments. So feel free to comment in the comment section. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. There's also a share button if you wanna share this in any Facebook groups or other groups that you're in, or just email it on to a friend who you think would enjoy making themselves a quilted hoodie. Go ahead and use that share button. And make sure you subscribe to this channel. I have so much more content for you, and you don't wanna miss it. So hit subscribe and then that bell, and you'll know every time I have a new quilting video for you, my friend. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you right here real soon.